All right. Well, so I've had uh, several people ask me if I can make a video assembling uh, the boards. And so this is my attempt at assembling one of the boards. I'll be assembling the J20 board, which of the three boards is the most complicated. And so for this, you know, you'll need the board. Here's the board as it came from JLPCB. Okay, this is it's called the front of the board, and obviously the back of the board. Okay, I've gone ahead and I've picked out the components needed for this board, and according to the bomb or the bill of materials, there are 17 components. And let me show you these components real fast, sort of scattered around in here. Okay. This looks like it's going to be tough. I've never done a video like this before. Okay, so let's look over here, and here is the GitHub repo for the boards and for the AMAC conversion. Okay, so let's go over to the wiki. All right, and I've written up here some instructions, you know, sort of what I did to, to come up with these boards, you know, in broad strokes. But uh, you know it's it's helpful. It's a good little guide. It, it's a work in progress. And over here, I have actual uh, bombs, but they're interactive bombs um, with a plugin uh, for KiCad. It's really nice, really good. Anyhow, so let's look at the J20 board. Okay, what you see on the left here uh, are the components ordered by reference number. So C is capacitor. And when you see here that you have multiple reference numbers, you know, uh, on one row here, that means that there are two components, right, that are the same type of component on the board. So capacitor one, capacitor two. And what's nice is, as you highlight over these, or as you hover over, rather, uh, they get highlighted, you know, the component gets highlighted on the board on the right. Um, and this is nice, this is helpful, because as you place it, uh, you can sort of check it off like it's done and I'm not familiar with this thing yet you know I just installed it and used it today but it's it has a lot of cool features you know and you can you know you can change you know how this list is displayed whether you want the front and the back of the board on the bottom or on the side uh, if you only want to show the front if you only want to show the back front and back, so on and so forth. You know, it's it's cool. I'll, I'll play with it some more later. But for now, let's start soldering. Um, I want to look here. Let's just start with C3. C3 is this one here. It's a 470 microfarad capacitor. And so it's this guy right here. And so right there you see this is the negative side of the capacitor. And it goes like this. It goes right in there. So we flip it around. Okay, what you can do is just solder it in place there. I hope it solders because sometimes my soldering iron acts up. And it looks like this is one of these times. It's a really cheap soldering iron that I bought that worked well for the first month and then sort of turns on and off and it does weird stuff, but once it gets going, okay, there we go. And that guy doesn't want to solder. Okay. There we go. All right. Get these guys off. They're in the trash. That guy's on there. Nice. So, secured. Okay, let's go to C1 and C2. All right. They're highlighted red there. These are the 22 picofarad capacitors. Um, these aren't the ones, 
So these aren't the ones that are actually in the bill of materials. These are other ones that I had lying around. But they will work. All right. Let's go to this guy first. So place it in. And there's no orientation for these. They're not polar capacitors like the other one, so you can put them however. All right, and you can see they're coming out the back here. And if you bend the legs a little bit, they'll stay in place. Okay. Hopefully, this soldering iron, there you go. Soldered fine. Soldered fine. The same thing for the other one. Yeah, that came out a little ugly. That's fine. It'll still work. Now, if you have something to hold your circuit board, this is easier. And I do have one. But for the video, I thought I'd just, you know, do it on my bench here. Just I'm assuming most people are going to be doing it that way. And I'm cutting these legs off. All right. Let me, there's like a ugly looking saw there. There you go. Okay. Let's check these guys off. All right, now R1, R2, and R3 are 10K resistors. So let's pick these guys out here. Okay, those are these guys. And you see they're brown, black, orange. You may not be able to see them there, but brown, black, orange means 10K. All right, so let's place the first one. Okay, I'll do. Let's see, let's do this one. Okay, close enough fit. So bend the legs. If you have a resistor sort of bending thing, that'll come out nicer, but there's no need, it's not necessary, you can do it by hand. Okay, place that one in, like that. Let's go to the next one. Okay, now let's solder them in. Okay, it's gonna move around a bit. Solder it in. Solder it in. Solder it in. Okay. That guy's not soldering. My soldering iron tip is dirty. And it doesn't seem to be heating up. It's cooling down. Okay, let's see. There we go. That's better. That's better. Okay. Third one here. This is hard to solder while you're video taking a video. Okay, same deal. We'll cut these legs off. Snip. Resistors. All right, let's go to R4. R4 is a 220 ohm resistor. It's going to look the same, except the colors are different. 220 is red, red, brown. 
So 220 is, let's flip this guy around. Okay, R4, right here. Oops. Now I think I bought this resistor wrong. It's a little bit bigger than the footprint. But being a resistor, you can fake it and you just bend it a little bit. It's going to look sloppy here because I really can't see what I'm doing because the lighting in here is terrible. Uh, but it's just what I had to do to get the video, you know, looking okay. Now my soldering iron is acting up again. Oh, great. Let me see what melts. Give me a second. It just soldering iron is misbehaving. Okay, there we go, back in action. Now it's important that you know the solder sticks to both the pad and the component leg, because um, if not, you'll have an intermittent connection or no connection at all. Okay, those look good enough. All right. Okay, R four is in. Now let's go to the diodes here. Um, the diodes um, are shocky diodes. These guy here, these guys here, and you know they're about the same size as a resistor. Okay. Now hold on one second. Let me make sure my iron is working. So you bend the legs, right, and then the diode's going to have this little line there, okay, and that should line up with the line that's on the PCB here, and so slide it in like that, and you slide it in like that, okay, again, it, you know, may not look too pretty, because of the way I'm doing it, but it will work. Famous last words. Okay, let's see if we can solder this without moving too much. I cannot see. You know, it's hard, like I said earlier, it's hard to see because of the lighting here, and I have 20 20 vision. Okay, that, that looks good. Let me fix this guy a little bit. That looks a little. Now the soldering iron is hotter now. Okay, again, we're going to cut these guys off. Okay, diodes installed. All right, so now it's calling uh, for the microcontroller, and we're not actually going to solder in the microcontroller. We're going to 
solder in a socket for the microcontroller. And the reason is that although you can program the microcontroller um, through one of these headers down here, um, you can also pull the chip out and program the chip, then reinsert it if you wanted to do it that way. Uh, so if you know you're going to program it from out here, you can you know go ahead and skip this step and solder the chip straight on there. I don't recommend it though. So you're going to see that uh, you have like a little divot here under U1. Okay, make sure you line that up with the divot that's in the socket. It's right here as well. It's hard to see in the video, and it's on the chip as well. Okay. Okay, bend these guys out a little, a little bit. All right. So we got that guy in. Now, if you flip it over, it might fall out. So hold it until you have at least one of the legs soldered. And what I like to do usually is that you know I'll grab. I grab the soldering iron and put some solder right on the tip just to get enough on one leg. Now it won't be pretty, but it will hold it in place. You see there, maybe we can get some in there. And like I said, it's not pretty, but it's staying put. Okay, it's not falling. Okay. So now we can focus on an uglier. Sorry. Now we can focus on another leg. Try don't solder the one that don't solder on the one that you just soldered because then you'll melt it and it'll fall right out. So you know I have to pick one way over here. That's soldered. Pick another one over here. Now it's not going anywhere. Okay. So now we can just you know put it in the position that's most comfortable for you and start soldering. Now this might take a while. Uh, none of this is comfortable because I can't see. And what's also making this difficult for me is that I've spent the last three days working on my uh, pool pump. And so I dug a trench about a foot and a half deep, two foot wide, and 30 feet long. Then I had to refill it. And uh, yeah, so my hands are kind of hurting right now. Okay. All right, looks clean, looks good. Even the the first leg looks clean. You know, if you have the tools to to you know to hold this in place and solder it, like a circuit holder or a helping hands or something like that, go ahead and use it. Like I said in the beginning, you know, I chose to do it just on my bench because I'm assuming that most people that will do this will do it just like this, and so that you can see it's possible. You know, I'm doing it that way, but not recommended if you have the tools. All right, so the socket is in place and it looks good. Let's check that off. All right, let's go to U2. Ah, the solid state relay. This is a relay with no moving parts. So that actually comes in here. Um, you know, touch ground or something before messing with sort of, you know, these ICs, you know, try to ground them yourself because Static discharge will or can destroy these things. Uh, I have destroyed. I have broken some of these. Okay, so here's the chip. All right, and fits right there. Okay, it's U2. And you see that they're all labeled on the on the board as well. So just like the other one, you'll see that there's a divot 
in the silk screen here. In the footprint for it, you'll see a divot. And you'll see that the chip itself has a divot there also. So that's how you line up the chip. And the legs are wider than the holes. And that's so you might it might be tricky getting it in. But you know, once you pop it in, you'll see that, you know, they all go and it sort of stays in place. They can fall out if you straighten them too much. But you want them to be slightly bent so that it didn't fall out. Anyhow, before soldering, make sure that all the legs are actually through and make sure that those two parts or those two uh, divots, you know, match up. All right, so let's solder this guy. In solid state relay installed. Crystal. This works with the two capacitors, this one, this one, to clock the actual microcontroller. And oh god. I just realized I soldered this in the wrong place. That's where the crystal goes. Huh. Alright, let's pull this guy out. So I am going to pull on it slightly as I heat up the legs. And there it came out. Okay, and then I'm going to heat these up a little bit. Uh, no, that's not going to come out. So you'll see here that um, there's solder in there, so I won't be able to push the crystal through. But that's okay, because we can wick it out, or if not, we can just heat it up and push it through. And so, I have a solder wick here. These sorts of things happen. And so maybe I can wick it out, if I can see what I'm doing. So it looks like most of it got worked out. Good. Let's clean it up a little bit here. Let's see. All right. I'll have to. So now let's see if we can slide this guy in. And yep. We did. All right. You know, again, bend the legs a little bit so it doesn't fly out. Yeah. Whatever. Or you can put some solder on the tip here. Just enough to keep it in place. And ugly, but it will do. I'll clean it up afterwards. So let's straighten this leg out. Okay. So I'll fix this guy up. Remember that capacitor? Just clean up the legs a little bit. And let's. Well, looks like I'm gonna have to wake that out too. Right, let's cut off these legs here. Let's 
clean enough. All right. Okay. That's actually staying in place. It's not falling out. And if I'm careful, I can solder it in there. Okay, that just goes to show you, mistakes can happen. Let's see if we can fix this guy a little bit. Okay. All right, that's looking better. Okay, let's check off the crystal. Okay, and now the hardest one to do. This one can take a while. And so the VGA connector, the E15, right? No, oh, has 15 legs there. 15 little pins. And then these two um, support, uh, support pins there. Now, aligning these and getting them in is a pain. And so I don't expect this to happen instantly. So let's see. You have to jiggle it around. Don't get discouraged. These are not easy to put in. Okay, I got some of them in and they just popped out. Okay. I mean, sometimes they just pop right in, you know, but more often than not, they don't. And it's frustrating because you start doubting whether or not the footprint was wrong. Anybody out there, you know, knows how to really do these, you know, in a nice way, please let me know. Because I've always had a hard time with these. Now, another thing you can do is if you're impatient, is probably you can squeeze these in a little bit together so they don't offer that much resistance. You know, which is probably a no-no, but this is not a medical device. This is definitely, this is firmly in the hobby space. second better light maybe I could do it all right okay after a long struggle I won I got it in there all right it's not soldered yet all right so I got to be careful anyways all 15 pins are in plus the two holder things there so let's solder at least one so it doesn't pop out okay so let's go here and ta-da, okay.
you'll see that oh, I'll pull the iron away every now and then and you'll hear like some stroking going on that's me cleaning the tip of the iron because it does uh, just get dirty All right. okay and that guy is placed Okay, this guy is electrically soldered, but we want to mechanically solder it because you know, if you press on this, you see it flexes a little. And so um, to do that, and you remember those pins that I messed up, that I squeezed in order to offer less resistance? Well, you can actually solder those a little bit, and they take a lot of solder. Make sure to heat up the pad and the little leg itself. sucked up a lot of solder. Okay. 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 And that looks good. That is not flexing. Or, well, it's flexing a little bit. That's okay. Alright. Move this guy out of the way. Okay. Now, I... These two headers, um, I didn't have extra headers, but that's okay. I had a strip of the same pitch, okay, and I cut cut some, you know, off. So we need three pins. You can actually, you know, you can do this. All right. And so, although not ideal, it'll work for what we need it for, anyhow. Okay, so same deal. All right, hold it with your hand. Might get a little hot. That's okay though. You know, you'll get used to it. I have a callus. It doesn't feel anything anymore. So yeah, I got one leg soldered. It'll stay in place. Let's go to the next one. Solder. Again, those are not, you know, uh, good connections there. They're not good electrical connections. That's just to hold it in place. So that when I come back, when I flip it around, it doesn't uh, fall off. So I'll put that guy there. Now let's solder him. Okay. Which one is it? Yeah, it's this one. All right. Oh, you didn't see that. Okay, and then the last one that that's that came out horrible. Look at that. That's bent. I gotta straighten it out because it's not the other one it won't fit. Okay, straighten it out, I just heat it up and move it. I don't have the fingers for this sort of stuff. I have sausage fingers. Great for digging ditches. Terrible for electronics. Okay. Alright. Get some solar on there. Okay. Now it's in place. Alright. Now let's solder them. Make sure, again, you know, uh, don't start with the one that's holding it in place because then it'll just fall right off. Do another one.
Let's clean up this little excess that's there. Okay. Soldered. Okay. Let's see here. Next. Okay, that guy, uh, J2, which connects to the J20 connector on the chassis, we'll leave for last. And, you know, I'll explain later. Okay, so this terminal here is where we actually connect. Uh, the other boards to your wires. Now I have this guy, which is not the exact one that goes there. This one's a little taller than the one that's in the in the bomb, but it's the same pitch and it will fit. And you know, for the purposes of this video, it's fine. So you place that in like that. Make sure that um, you know this side here is facing the edge of the board because that's where the wires go in and get crimped down or screwed down rather. If you solder it in this way um, you'll have a harder time. I mean you can do it you know but it's just very uncomfortable. But you know if you think it's better that way you can go ahead and do it that way. Alright so let's do the same sort of thing here. Hold it in place with your hands like this okay and get some solder you know, on the tip of your soldering iron. Okay, and then put one in just to hold it in place. Okay, and that guy is soldered in. Good enough. It's not falling out. See? All right. This is going to take up more solder. They are bigger pads and thicker pins. And because it takes more and they're bigger pads, it's going to take a little longer to heat up the pad and the pin. But make sure they are at the right temperature, or else it's going to be a terrible electrical connection. Okay, so this guy is solder. All right, well, you'll see that um, there are two pads here, okay? And those pads, uh, this way, so it's the same as it is on here. And I'll, I'll mouse over them here, uh, JP1 and JP2. Those are open right now. Right, and if you short circuit these, which means just put a solder blob on them, they will send the EDIV information, you know, to whatever source is kind of so. Like for example, you hook it up to your computer, it'll send the EDIV information to the computer, and it will automatically configure itself, you know, for this display. Now, um, on something like a Raspberry Pi, I found that some uh, VGA, rather HDMI to VGA uh, converters had issues with EDID and it would make the Raspberry Pi display flicker. So if you know how to, if you just configure it directly with the Raspberry Pi, there's no need for EDID information. Uh, you don't have to solder these two pads there. But, you know, if you're going to hook it up to something else, go ahead and solder it. The nice thing is you can solder, desolder as you need to. In our case, we're going to solder. soldered make sure there's a blob on there and that both pads have solder on them okay oh, there's a little bit of my gelled hair there all right okay 
um, done except for the J2 connector, which we'll do um, in another video, which I'll splice into this one. Okay. All right. Um, right now, we're looking at a board that I've built already and that I've used in a lot of videos already. This is a working board, and it's currently installed in the iMac. Uh, it's hard to see because I'm zoomed in, uh, but you know this is the bottom of the iMac. You might recognize, you know, the chassis here and all that. And um, I'm using two screws. Uh, move this around. Two screws to hold the board in place. Now I'm going to remove these. And those two screws are just, you know, the screws that held the logic board in place. Just reusing them. So when you take the logic board out, keep those screws. All right. Okay. So now here is the J20 connector, and eventually, you know, the board that we built earlier will go there. Okay. Now. The reason I left you know, this header for last is because had I soldered it you know, in here first, I might have gotten this sort of orientation just a little off, making it difficult to install. And although this connector does wiggle a little bit, it isn't great. So what I like to do is I'll take this header and I'll actually plug it in first. Okay. Now it's in place. I'll take the board and I'll set it in. And you'll notice that when you do this, the pins really don't come out all the way. And that's because that's, you know, I might have selected the wrong header for this, but it was the only one that I could get that I didn't have to wait 22 weeks for. Um, we can solder it this way and it will work, but you do want them to come out just a little bit more. So pull this out just a little bit. You don't want to pull it out too much. Okay. All right. Now, or you could pull it out enough where it's wiggling. Place this in. Uh, then sort of squeeze it in there, right? But you know that's not great either. So just place, push this in a little bit. Make sure it's you know it's grabbing the other side. It's nice and firm. It's not wiggling. That means it's making a good electrical connection. Okay. And now they stick out ever so slightly. They don't stick out a lot. And so, but you know, don't worry about that. It's still going to work. You know, it feels nice to have them stick out a lot more. They're not going to in this case, unless you can find another header. Uh, and if you do, let me know the one with you know where you don't have to wait 22 weeks. Anyhow, put the screws in. Okay, so now the screws are in place. The header is in, all right? The legs may not be sticking out as far as we want them to, but it's good enough, all right? And now we can start soldering in place. Uh, this is a little difficult to do while recording. So in this case, you're going to have to just heat up the pad and maybe touch the pin a little bit on there and, uh, you know, keep the iron on there so that it heats up evenly, you know, after you see the solder melt at the top, so it actually goes through the via and actually, you know, grabs the actual pin. Okay. You really want to take your time here because well, all the connections are made via this one.
Okay, that's soldered. Now, last but not least, is the actual microcontroller. So the microcontroller, just like the other ones, the other chip has a divot here. All right. And you'll see that, again, try to discharge yourself, you know, touch ground or something, or if you have a grounding strap, use it. Um, these pins are sensitive to static discharge. Um, you'll find that uh, the pins, right, are wider, or rather, the spacing between these are wider than what they go in. That's normal, that's how they come. So, insert it carefully, you know, and usually what I like to do is I'll slightly put in one side, not really putting it in, just place it there, and then I'll squeeze in, this and then I place it there. Now, I haven't squeezed it in all the way, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll come inspect and make sure that all the pins are indeed lined up with the hole before I push this guy in. And it looks like it, except maybe for this guy there, so push that guy there a little bit. There you go. And then I give it a nice little, yep, that was satisfying. Went in, nice and tight, and it's in. Okay, now let's remove it. And we can see that it is in there. Now it's not straight in this case, but that's fine. I can see that it's soldered all the way. So I'm, I'm, I'm inspecting, you know, the pad down here. Okay, and it's fine. It's fine. Also, there's an orientation that you need to be aware of when you put this header in. You'll see there's a divider here. This plastic divider. This plastic divider is not in the center of the pins. And so you'll have more length on this side, less length on the other side. The one with the more length is the one that you want to use for this side that plugs into the J20 connector on the iMac chassis. Okay, and then the shorter side is the side that pops in through here. Now the reason, um, you know, this doesn't really reach and gives you, you know, a satisfying amount of pin length on this end is because, well, it's a standard size header and this distance, you know, from the connector to the logic board is not a standard distance. You know, it's very typical of the stuff that Apple did, you know. Um, they would do a lot of non-standard stuff uh, and it's, you know, uh, for quality reasons, you know, it's a really good quality design. I, I don't exactly understand why they did it that way, uh, but I'm sure there's a quality reason behind it. Um, anyhow, that's why it sort of goes all the way. But it's fine. Um, yep.